Hi, welcome to the Boulder Bookstore YouTube channel. My name is Liesl Freudenstein and I am the children's and YA buyer for the bookstore. Uh, today we're going to talk about spooky graphic novels because it's almost Halloween. It's just around the corner and um, it's that time of year. So uh, for the littler ones we have um, a choose your own adventure haunted house. So if you're familiar with the choose your own adventures you know, do you want to enter the, the story would open up, do you want to enter the magic house, yes or no. If you say yes, you go to page X. If you say no, you go to another page. And so you wind your way through the maze of the haunted house, um, choosing your own adventure each time. So I think that there are like 10 different stories in here, so different paths that you can take. Um, this is meant for the younger ones. Most of the choose your own adventures are definitely upper middle grade. Um, but I think that this could be a lot of fun to read and explore again and again. It's like ten books in one. Uh, they are adapting the R.L. Stein books. Um, you know, our, all of our favorite R.L. Stein. We just love him here. Uh, this one is Welcome to uh, Scare School, The Just Beyond. And it's, it is a graphic novel, so that's also really wonderful. Good for your younger groups. I want to have a quick shout out to the new graphic novel Witches by Roald Dahl. Um, super scary. I find that the Witches book itself was really frightening. <laughs> so when I read it when I was a kid, uh, so if you're into a lot of scare, and I, I think the movie is coming out too as well, so that could be an interesting tie-in if you want to explore that. Um, looks like good art too. It's a little lighter actually on the art than I would have expected, which is probably good because the story itself is quite scary as I mentioned. Um, one of the favorite entries that I have is um, Beetle and the Hollow Bones. This is a really great story about friendship and perseverance and courage. Um, Beetle is a goblin and she would much rather do anything than study goblin magic. She wants to hang out at the mall, as a matter of fact. And one of the reasons that she wants to hang out at the mall is that she has her best friend, Blob the Ghost. Um, Blob the Ghost is really great. He's wordless, he doesn't talk, so he makes shapes because he's a blob. Um, but there is a threat to the mall, and since Bob Blob is tied to the mall, they have to figure out and stop the threat and stop the mall from being destroyed, uh, which means that Beetle must actually learn how to use her magic in order to break the curse. Uh, again, the art is just really lovely, it really pops, it's a lot of fun, good action, good framing, um, the color scheme is really great, again, um, really interesting, fun characters, we love Beetle, yay! The last one, the big graphic novel that I have, is um, The Last Halloween, number one, The Children. This is done in black and white, it's probably um, better for older kids because it has sort of a slightly gothic, um, creeping horror sort of thing, but it is still a kid's one, so it's not like super, super, super scary. Um, but on um, for every human on Earth, there is a monster connected to them, and there's been a barrier usually in between them, so you don't uh, you know see your monster. Um, but the barrier has broken, and it's just a couple of days before Halloween. So in order for Hall this not to be the last Halloween, our hero, uh, Mona, meet some interesting people, some new friends. She has a ghoul, a vampire, and her own monster, and they go on a reluctant hero's journey to restore the barrier so that there will be a Halloween again next year, which we hope we will do. <laughs> um, and like I said, it's black and white. There's not a lot of framework going on in it, so it's just pictures sort of emerging from the mist or from the, the black backdrop. Um, really great. It just came in, so I'm pretty excited about it, just that it arrived in time before Halloween. Um, I know a lot of you are, like me, probably not going to go trick-or-treating and are going to be staying inside and looking for some alternatives. I've heard of some great, you know, virtual costume parties and um, trick-or-treating within the house and things like that. Uh, one thing that you might want to also contemplate is perhaps playing a game. Um, we have this game called Mysterium, and it's really fun. Um, I played it with, my daughter really liked it. She is 16, but I think you can go down as low as 8 if you're playing the game, uh, especially if the parent is the ghost. So the game mechanics work like this. There is a ghost. 
they know what happens to them. They're trying to get you to guess what happens to them. So you have all these cards with images on it and they pick the best one that depicts how they died. They sort of lead you on this journey to these clues to get it. So a lot of storytelling is involved in that. You have to kind of read the mind of the ghost a little bit. I don't know if you can see the back of it, but it does sort of show some of the things. So the ghost has these cards and you have a certain number of cards as the players and you place them down and the ghost picks which one um, best tells the story of how they died. There is a time limit, and I do think, I mean, it does say 10 and up on the uh, Board Geek website, because I looked it up, but I do think it could go down as little as 8. I think there's some rule, mo rule modifications that you can make that can make it fun. And even if you want to not really play the game, but just kind of tell a story or use it like clue, I really think you can do that. The art in it is amazing. It's really wonderful and very fun. And if you already have Mysterium, we do have an expansion set coming in. So, there you go. Very fun. I hope you have a happy Halloween and be safe. Love y'all. Best wishes.